Who is SimGot and what are the EK3s? So usually I get contacted uh, via the contact form linked from my uh, YouTube channel by all these various companies saying, oh, will you review my uh, Bluetooth earphones? Or will you re review my $50 IEMs? And my answer is usually no. You can actually go and have a look at the contact form and see all the, the things I put in there to indicate what I'm not interested in. And I got contacted by SimGot and they actually responded as I had hoped someone would respond to that form. And so I've now got these EK3s here, which are apparently some nice IEMs. So that's the story. And they certainly look pretty. Um, I've already seen the website, obviously. So I'm curious to know what they're like. And it's a new company, of course, from China, not surprisingly. And a few people have suggested, why don't you try some more Chinese IEMs? So that's what I'm doing. So my first time having a look at these, they arrived today. And they seem to be, well, pretty nice and shiny. Let's have a quick gander what's in the box. I like this case. We're certainly going with the leather cases these days. There's a campfire audio case. There's a Fio. I do wonder if they're using the same OEM, the original maker, to make these cases. Because you open them, open them all up, and they all have similar kinds of arrangements. So what have we got here? A set of different size, different, tips, different size tips, small, medium, and large. They look like regular small, medium. Oh, hold on. We have different size tips altogether. Very small, medium, and large, and regular small, medium, and large. I should maybe call this Asian small. I don't mean that as an, any, any kind of it just seems to be, I know more people in Asia with very, very tiny ear canals than I do elsewhere. It could be a misunderstand, mis, uh, misperception, but it seems to be in Japan, you could only get the very small ones. We have some foam tips jammed in here and it looks like a cleaning tool. So a brush and a, a thing, oh, a little screw. Ah, now we need the screwdriver thing. It's not a, a, a well, could be used as a wax cleaning tool, but that will come later because this is why I chose to review these IEMs specifically, and it relates to this. So let's not forget that. And the reason was something I saw from another company, but not so original, but noticeable. So we have the cable. That's interesting. So we've noticed that you can get, looks like fairly good quality, inexpensive cables from China. Case in point, if they're going to detach from all the cables I have here, CP2s. These are even finer, sorry, shows you CPs. This seems to be even finer than the CP cable, but much the same kind of copper or silver plated copper mix. And a 3.5 millimeter plug. And we have two pin. It's not an MMCX, it's two pin, even though the round shape may have fooled you. It's hard to say, sometimes I prefer MMCX, but we shan't be too picky. Let's have a look at the IEMs themselves. This is where things get interesting. I'll get off this little fancy cover. It's nice. First time I've seen plastic IEMs of any kind with a dust cover or scratch cover. So I like this design, this kind of honeycomb design, although someone seems to have put it in there by hand and it looks a little bit uneven. There's your two-pin connector. There's Talk about a chunky notch on this. Let's see how wide it is. Grab the old ruler. Going to be, I'm going to look to see, looks like being standard five and a half mil. Okay, I'll see if I can show that for you. It's about five and a half mil with a big notch. So it's going to be a little bit difficult to get some ear tips on. And we have this here. Now the interesting thing, about it from being multiple, multiple balanced armature, I think it's this is the mid-range in their set. I'm curious to try the high-end one, or I probably will be. I haven't listened to these at all. Now can you see the curious factor about this? You have adjustment switches. And so this is what you need this tiny tool for, is to switch these through. And you can adjust apparently the bass and the treble. So
so mm, looks like I like the funky pattern although it's a little bit uneven maybe a little bit smoky in design let's see if this one's any better nailing down a lot of stuff in China has to be said is handmade so as a result things can tend to be people tend to rush and do things a little bit imperfectly but from here it looks like they've done pretty well though some bubbles in there this is one of those things that especially if this is an early production thing they're going to take it have a little trouble nailing down but it's forgivable if they're inexpensive these are not too inexpensive the few hundred dollars but well we'll see how we go that made for interesting listening with these IEMs. Now, out of the box, they had, I suppose, uh, I mean, the treble was a little bit rolled off, but with time and use, actually, the treble increased a little bit, which is, uh, when out of the box, you know, a little bit rolled off seemed about right. And considering that you could kind of boost the treble with, uh, you know, with one of the switches, and you can, it also, inside the box, we saw a couple of sets of tips, and because the, what they were oriented with the Chinese writing facing up. I didn't understand what they were for. You have the standard ear tips have a kind of, or ear tip one has a wide nozzle, which is, for, they said, for mid-high frequency extension. And the second tip type, which I already have on there, has a bit of a narrower nozzle. Now, normally this doesn't make a big difference with uh, balanced armature IMs. You usually see this with uh, dynamic driver IMs, which, depending on the basic setup, without without tubes they can be strongly influenced by the amount of kind of restriction on the um, output now i mainly use them with the these ear tip twos which are the ones which they say for enhanced bass and listening comfort and not going to again it's not going to make a lot of uh, difference to the bass the bass was uh, you know a little fairly on the light side and most of the focus was around the treble and kind of the mid range for which you know there's a kind of very clear mid range presentation and you know enough kind of once the uh, they had kind of run in for a while you know enough extension in the treble that I thought was kind of reasonably satisfying and it's about as good treble as you're going to get for around the $350 mark so nothing particularly surprising there adjusting the switches they didn't make a huge difference uh, the bass boost kind of lifted the bass a little bit but the bass itself doesn't give, you know, it can't go down and give you deep rumble. It doesn't have really punchy bass like you get with dynamic driver IMs, obviously. It doesn't have quite as warm bass as, say, something like, probably the nearest competitor that I have handy here is the uh, FA7s, which I'll talk about a little bit more later. And the, the thing is, once they'd brightened up, I thought the treble was, well, maybe even just a touch too strong. So switching up the treble and giving it more boost either leaving the bass on and, and pushing it into a little bit of somewhat of a V-shape or leaving it off and making them very bright. Also, we've been switching to these tips, which ended up giving a slightly brighter presentation. That, I thought, was kind of too much of a good thing. If they'd stayed a little bit on, kind of on the warmer side, then, you know, as they are out of the box, and then these kind of switches and, and uh, tips would have been of benefit. But it, to me, it ended up being unnecessary once they'd kind of run in. Um, just as a note, you can ignore the black marks on this. The black I was trying to be tricky and, and write some kind of indicator as to which tips were for the SIMGOTs and not the, and get them mixed up with other, other IEMs so they don't come with black marks on them. That's just me. Anyhow, so it left for a pair of IEMs. Like maybe most noticeably the sound signature compared to the FA7s. The FA7s are kind of warm, rolled off treble, kind of warm bass, very easy listening, but not very kind of precise, a little bit kind of veiled, uh, a bit mushy kind of in the sound, but very easy to listen with. And kind of the main thing is they present a better bass. I mean, they don't do deep rumble, but these definitely don't do deep rumble very well either. So playing my usual list of tracks from the number 82 playlist, the new basement tapes, which has some deep rumble, which I just used to test the presence of in uh, IEMs and headphones, it just wasn't going to bring it out very strongly, and the bass boosting switch wasn't going to really help with that either. So, but I mean, these sound uh, with just the bass boosted on here sound even a little bit V-shaped compared to the FA7s. Of course, the FA7s are kind of very mid for very lower mid mid forward, and of course, we you know more V-shaped when you, you boost up the treble. So as things go, I did really like them with, with vocals and kind of instrument-focused stuff, which is a lot of what I've been listening to lately, you know, good old jazz and, and uh, Patricia Barber and that kind of thing. But anything that requires thump and kick, well, you probably want something with a dynamic driver in there or something a bit more 
eight with the more drivers in there and more aimed at that and that's going to be well what are you going to you have to switch to some um, a different brand for that so if you're more of an acoustic mid-focused uh, vocal kind of person these are, are quite reasonably nice and you can do a little bit of fine tuning especially if you like a kind of more uh, aim towards a bit of a brighter sound or a bit of a v, v gentle v-shaped sound then you know you might like these but if you'd like your bass kick and your you know a bit of punch in the music maybe modern music will come out probably too bright in these and not with enough enough kick all the same i thought i'd give the uh sim god ek3s a go with a variety of equipment to see how they scaled up because you know there's no point in spending more money on uh, extra gear to use with a pair of IMs if they aren't going to get the benefit of it. So in that, well, I did, they did scale up from these little players up to things like the M9 and the M9 up to the M11. That and kind of the mojo where it uh, proverbially hit the wall, you could say. And, you know, you weren't going to get much improvement out of, you know, the difference between the uh, M11 and the mojo wasn't really noticeable as it is with higher end IMs. So that kind of gives you an idea where they sit in the range of things, I hope. So that overall is the SimGot EK3s. And in the end, I wish just mainly for preference, a bit more bass or a bit more bass kick was really what they need. They do a reasonable job, you know, with mid-range focus stuff and, and vocals and, and instruments. You know, there's nice Camille Thurman here, but just like the Camille Thurman actually does have a fair bit of a reasonable amount of bass in it from the drums that are in there. And in that, there, you know, it just didn't give there, didn't it give quite the kick that you know I've used to. And maybe that's probably not in, not helped by the fact that I've had IEMs through here, a lot of which have had dynamic drivers, which give that better bass kick. So you know, just something to be worth considering there. All the same, I hope you did like this video. If you did, as usual, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, or constructive criticism, please do leave a comment. And also, just to note that these videos are supported by ordinary people such as yourself and who, in exchange for a couple of bucks a month or more, can get my free advice. They get to go in the drawers when I give away stuff, get to ask me questions and help with purchasing gear, which can save them a lot more than a couple of bucks a month if they're making big purchases, as uh, some people have found out. So consider becoming a member and, and join in our little community where we have... Uh, chat and other things going on and uh, some other bonuses such as giveaways and some music discounts as well so check out the links that you see on screen or in the description to uh, join in on that and thanks once again for watching and i'll see you on see you online